Get ready to twist the throttle because today on At Your Leisure, we're going on a long distance motorcycle ride through some of the most striking lands in the West. I'm Chad Booth. Follow Rhea and me as we hit the road with some good friends. Then we're mixing love and recreation as we discover one spot perfect for riding and romance. Lastly, Terry Wood finds out how long it takes before a temporary land closure becomes permanent. And you always end up seeing beautiful things like this, so don't touch that dial. At Your Leisure's next. I always marvel at how different bike riding is in the country. I've not done a lot of it back east, but I did a fair amount of it in Pennsylvania and around the New York state when I lived back there. And as pretty as all the little windy things are through the woods, you can never see more than a half mile in any direction. And out here in the west, that's what makes it special because you can come up over a mountain pass and you can see for 100 miles. And that's exactly what we've been experiencing today, riding motorcycles on Highway 2495 in this beautiful state of Utah. That's true, and what a great, what a great group to travel with. We're traveling with the Stedmans today. You know, Bruce Stedman right here is, was our very, 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 very first sponsor, not only on At Your Leisure, but on the preceding show of the Utah Trail. He was the first guy to sign up. We appreciate the fact that you're letting us still ride with you. That's true. Most people say no after once. <laughs> He's the stud of motorcycles. I even shared my old bike. That's my old bike. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's right. That's true. This is, I had to talk Bruce for a long time. He finally entrusted me with his wife's bike. Actually, it's Linda's, right? <laughs> Anyway, there's so much to see along here. Bruce has been down here for years. Great place to travel in the shoulder season. So who better to tell us about it than Bruce? Well, we come out of my Tory house, went down to Capitol Reef, went down to Hanksville, out of Hanksville towards, towards Lake Powell, cut off from there, went to Hyde, and, and then down here to Fry Canyon. I'm on this road a lot because we have a home in Torrey. And my favorite time is always on a motorcycle because it's just it's just the freedom of it. You know, these, these roads coming down through here around Fry Canyon and, and that, you, you got big swoopy turns that are, you know, you can see clearly the other side of them and they're three miles away and you can see that you just kind of open it up and fly around there. It's pretty fun. And there's not much traffic. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty open. So Bruce. Is this kind of what your new house in Kanab looks like? <laughs> we come down this road the year they built it. They finished it. That was the Bicentennial Highway. It was on 750s then. And boy, we just couldn't believe it. It was so smooth and open and all the turns and what you saw. And, and yeah, we opened them up quite a bit. <laughs> He's going 150 miles an hour. I'm not either. I, I, I run out of gas <laughs> because I'm trying to keep up with him. I think we get caught in a box where we think maybe we've done all the fun stuff we can do and there's something about a motorcycle that gives you a, a feeling of freedom I, I don't know how to explain it but the street biking ha has that that ability you know I'm just happy to be here happy to still be alive and hope I can do this 10 more years so so far in the show have we whet your appetite about adventure in this part of the country <laughs> That's a good gert, one. Gert, gert, Because we're right on the Fremont I, River. My daughter doesn't call me goober for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is the Fremont River that runs right through the middle of Capitol Reef, all the way, it'll eventually find its way to Lake Powell. Well, right now it's time for us to go to our travel adventure. It also involves water, and it poses a riddle. What connects love and adventure? He's gone a lot with work, so when I get time with him, it's really nice to be able to have that time with him. For engaged couple Kyler and Amaurice, time is everything. As the weeks count down toward their wedding day, every moment seems heightened, each stolen kiss a cherished memory. Some instances carry more weight than others, though. New experiences have a way of solidifying into permanent landmarks for the major transitions in our lives, those times when you have a definitive before and an after. When you share those experiences as a couple, they become that much more memorable. That's exactly what these two paramours are searching for today as they ride with ATV Rental Service Adventure House on the trails outside Midway, Utah 
just west of Heber City. We started on a gravel road and eventually got to some smaller trails about the same size as the machine where you had to crawl over some rocks and then there were spots where you could get some speed up and some puddles and all sorts of fun. I just like being out in nature, being away from the city and all the noise and everything. It's really fun to just go out and explore. The back of Mount Timpanogos was really pretty to see. I hadn't seen that before with snow on it, so. The views of Timpanogos right now are unreal. The snow on the backside, it's not going to be seen like that for very long through the year. It's only a, a short amount of time where it's covered like it is. And so it, it's awesome to experience that before the season keeps going. The further we went along, the more technical the trail went. We saw a couple deer. The views were really pretty. Um, I can only imagine, like as the season goes on, how much prettier it's going to be as everything greens and blooms and everything. The views were only the tip of the iceberg, though. Sometimes a simple ride can take you somewhere totally unexpected and seemingly out of place. That's exactly what Kyler and Amaris found in the hills outside Midway. We ended up at Cascade Springs. And I've never been here before, but it's, it's a really pretty nature walk. Um, really simple, really easy, not real long, not rough terrain, just a nice walk, but it's pretty. Not a lot of people really even know about this place. It's such a quiet little area and where you have to take the dirt roads to get to it, it kind of takes people and they go other directions, but I would highly recommend coming to see Cascade Springs. Wooden boardwalks lead through marshlands, punctuated by waterfalls both small and surprisingly large. Trees have only just now started to bud in these elevations, so the contrast between the green moss and the barren foliage is particularly striking. In fact, this entire area is actually one of interesting contrast. It's rural with a touch of urban that offers activities across the spectrum. Well, if they're wanting to go shopping, there's not a lot of shopping. There's mountain biking five minutes away in any direction. There's trails on both sides of Wasatch County. In 30 minutes, you can be up in the Uena National Forest and do backpacking. You can, you can do anything you want straight out your back door. And these mountains are ready for you to explore in whatever way you choose. But just remember, adventure is always better when you have someone alongside to share in the journey. That doesn't have to be the love of your life, but it'll probably be better if it is. I'm sure Kyler and Amaris would agree. I just really enjoy being around her. It's fun. It gets our adrenaline going. They get to see some new terrain. They get to kind of experience something they've never had to experience before. I think it's a, a great time and a bonding moment for, for all ages. It's always fun to get out and try new things. Um, I know some people don't like getting out of their comfort zones necessarily, but I would encourage that. It's healthy and it's fun to have it, to create those memories and then have different experiences. Just being out in general is a, a great opportunity to, to bond, to build memories, to build common connections, and just being outdoors is, is therapeutic individually. It provides therapy for us as a unit as well, and so we, we really enjoy it for that reason. Sometimes the simplest off-road trips end with the most unique destinations, and that's exactly what we found today. Now I'd like to thank Adventure House for taking us out. There are tons of trails out here. I mean, you have Wasatch Mountain State Park right over the hill, hundreds of miles. You can explore these mountains, see these views, and within the next few weeks, all these trees are going to be blossoming, and it's going to be gorgeous. So set your sights right here. Well, for At Your Leisure, I'm Stephen Human. We need to take a commercial break, and we'll be back with more AYL. This one's for the daring and defiant. The ones who prefer a path that hasn't been paved for them. Who see an open space as an invitation to send it. And gravity as a mere suggestion. The Can-Am Spring Fever sales event is on now. Visit your local dealer for details.
off-road utility, the completely reinvented Ranger XP1000. It's got the most power, the largest towing capacity, the highest ground clearance, and the best comfort and storage. Introducing the all-new Polaris Ranger XP1000, the hardest working, smoothest riding Ranger ever built. There's a little place on a Utah map where I was raised, where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at night. Oh, there ain't nothing like being raised in the basin with a Ute reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. I have to tell you a little story about this segment. This entire trip that we're taking down here actually started with Russell talking about needing to do a new a product review on the new venture. And uh, kind of one thing led to another said, hey, Chad, I got an idea. You've got an old one, I've got a new one, so let's take them and compare them. So, <laughs> about the only thing that's the same is the name. Uh -huh. They kept the Venture name, but that one is a four-cylinder, 1300 cc. This is a twin, 1900 cc, or if you would like cubic inches, 113 cubic inches. So Russell, let's start with what makes these two bikes different. The first thing I noticed is your motor is much more skinny than this one. <laughs> this one has four piston pistons, this one has two pistons. Is one more torquey than the other? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot more torquey. In fact, it was it took me a while to get used to riding this bike. You know, Yamaha went totally a different direction. They wanted a twin. They wanted an air-cooled. They knew they had the technology there. And so here we have the brand new Resurrected Venture. Is it the shift pattern the most noticeable thing? That well, it's got a six-speed transmission, which is well, the first thing. So too. you have overdrive. You get a lot better fuel economy. We learned that today. <laughs> Yes, we did. It goes, it goes pretty far on a fuel tank. Yeah. <laughs> it's got this sure park system, which when you put that lever down, you can go in forward and in reverse at a walking speed. So if you're ever trying to park into a parking spot, it's got that. Hey, can somebody help Chad give him reverse? I have my own, look, one hand. <laughs> To me, I wanted navigation, I wanted Bluetooth technology, I wanted to be able to talk on my phone, all the things that a millennial wants. Yes, and Russell would never say this, but I will. He also wanted a bike that didn't, in 2009, still have a cassette player in it, okay? <laughs> the biggest thing, they didn't go far away from this bike. This bike was extremely comfortable, an amazing touring bike, so they didn't take what was good on this bike and just throw it away. My wife's always, turn down the radio, turn down the radio. Now, she can listen to her own music and I can, so you have different compartments. So I don't have to listen to the same music she is listening to. Let's talk about storage on it. What, what did they do to the trunk? Did, they, did, we gain, did we gain or did we lose? In fact, I think Rhea's in here, isn't she? Look it's where deep. it comes here. Yeah. Okay. Two now. full coverage helmets will fit in there. Now, look where this one stops. <laughs> That's a lot, that's a lot yeah, of difference. That's the first thing I noticed is and how yet, deep it was. If you look at the profile of the bike, it doesn't really change much, does it? No. The entire bike sits lower, which probably is throwing your center of gravity closer to the ground. Yes, and this thing handles amazing. It does, the center of gravity is like two inches lower than the old Venture. With the two cylinder engine versus the four cylinder engine and all that torque, it's gonna shift differently. And sure enough, it didn't take me but three shifts to hit the rev limiter. And all of a sudden I went, oh yeah, I'm not on the old Venture. I've had my test drive on the new bike, and I can safely say one thing. It handles real different, and two, Russell, I need a longer test drive. <laughs> we can work that out. <laughs> if you drive out to Tooele, we have one of these bikes that's a demo bike, and we let you take it. You need to have a driver's license, obviously, and fill out a form, but you know what? We want you to ride it, and when we say test ride, we don't mean around the block. We're gonna let you take it for a half hour, 45 minutes, because you really gotta spend that much time on it to see the beauties of this bike. Check it out. Stedman's, remember, how far out? Well, 300 miles. Is no, what from here it's thinks. like six. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only 30 back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more at your leisure. We'll join the girls and Bruce and continue our story when we come back.
How much do you think it would cost to spend a few days at a golf resort with your accommodations on the fairway and a lake to your back? Two, three hundred dollars a night? How about 25 or 30? Ray City RV can make that dream come true because Utah has several state parks with golf courses attached. Ray City RV has the RV that's right for you. Find out how you can enjoy the passion of your dreams in the outdoors with a new RV from Ray City RV, Utah's low price leader since 1946. Too often we find ourselves in shoes like these, or these. Wouldn't it be nice to change into something more like this, or this? How about these? Put on whatever shoes you prefer and come to Beaver County. We have exactly the adventure you need to put under them. So the next time you want to change out of these, come to Beaver County where you can jump into a pair of these. Beaver County, Utah. Lace up for adventure. Now, Ria, thank you for taking care of my hair. You're welcome. Is it, it looks, really bad? No, actually, here? it looks fantastic. Oh, well, that's Compared good because usually it doesn't. It looks good today. Yeah. You know, Ria, I always like this part of the trip out here because every now and then you just pull off right to the side of the road. You don't have to go more than 10 feet, and all of a sudden you get a glimpse of something remarkable. Like Lake Powell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or what remarkable. used to be Lake Powell. Yeah. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. <laughs> we are. Uh... Ooh, somebody's <laughs> filming us. Sorry. <laughs> The thing I love about this, that we are in this little spot on Highway 95. We've been following 24 and 95 today with the, with the Stedmans. This is a gorgeous overlook. It's beautiful. You just pulled our bikes up on the side and walked on down here. You know when you're traveling, there's two things you learn. That's true. The first one is always the places that you go. But what's the second one? The people you're with. Being on the road is, um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it tries patience for a lot of people at times because you're sometimes in the heat, you're sometimes, somebody wants to stop and they're hungry and the rest of you just want to keep riding, you want to get miles on, you just want to ride. So you really learn the types of individuals that you can go on the road with. It's really good, I think, husband and wife, because you have to trust who, you're, who the driver is. And so I think the more time you spend together doing it, the more you trust each other on a bike. But it also, the more you trust each other in every other aspect of your marriage and, and in a couple. I've got some extra alone <laughs> If you really want some love handles, I've got some extra. I'm working. <laughs> more. Well, we haven't seen each other for a long time. A long time. He's just friendly, you know? And he just walks up to people and likes talking. A lot of times we have to leave him <laughs> because he's still talking. I mean, look what he's doing right now. We've been here for two hours. Heidi and I were just saying today we hadn't had time together. You know, we don't have any kids at home right now, but this time on the bike is unlike anything else. Yeah, we're empty nesters. We don't have kids at home, but being on the bike is a different deal, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's good. <laughs> Even when I'm going a little bit too fast, trying to catch up with my dad. I can tell when he's come home and had a stressful day, and that's, let's just go for a ride. Within 10 minutes, he's calmed down. The road just kind of takes all that away. And the bike does too, the feel of just going for a ride together. So I think that's a really good thing, a really good stress reliever, a really good um, thing that helps you kind of let everything else go. Oh, this is so much fun today. Um, obviously, you can see that we are right outside Factory Butte with that beautiful background behind us. But we're actually in Canesville, which is right outside of Hanksville, if you haven't been out here. And this is a fantastic place to dirt bike. And Canesville's kind of cool because the one building in town is a fully functioning roadway in. Yeah, it's just kind of there. It's like a little oasis. There you go. It makes Rhea happy. You know, our journeys quite often take us right past our stories. And that's the case today because our trailhead is about Factory Butte. And it's brought to you by Rocky Mountain ATV MC every week. If they say they're going to do something, they need to, they need to do it. You know, we've all been taught that a promise is a promise, and you're only as good as your word. Such platitudes sound good on paper, but often in real life, their lofty ideals just don't seem to hold much weight. And that's how residents of Wayne County, Utah, have been feeling for the past 12 years, as a promised temporary land closure has become all but permanent. Now here between the small towns of Hanksville and Caneville, 45 minutes south of I-70, uncertainty has reigned for more than a decade. 
Factory Butte has been used by the OHV community for years and years. In 2006, the BLM did a temporary, they said a temporary closure because of some endangered cactus that they say it was here. These endangered cactus actually got listed before the BLM got their study done. The, the, uh, these cactus are everywhere, but it's still closed today. With the infrastructure that's been put in, it's supposed to be opened back up, but it hasn't happened yet. This area kind of has a special meaning to people in Wayne County. With roads closed and, and restrictions on certain things, I have a good friend that's uh, disabled and he wants access, and, and so do other people want access. The original open area of Factory Butte encompassed almost 150,000 acres. Several populations of Winkler and Wright fishhook cactus were discovered in 1999, and they were studied for seven years prior to the closure. Originally, the BLM stated the temporary closure would allow land managers the chance to better determine which areas around the Butte would remain closed, this was to protect the cacti, and which would be reopened. The sector known as Swing Arm City still offered cross-country travel, but at a mere 2,600 acres, locals were shocked. Even so, community leaders like Dennis Blackburn held out hope a final decision would be handed down quickly and at least some of the beloved desert would be restored to them. Now, more than 10 years later, their patience is wearing thin. The soil that's around here, you can come in, you can ride, you can make all the tracks. The very next rainstorm, it, it is right back to its natural it looks like nobody's even been there. It's one of the best places around for, for this type of use. In order for that use to ever potentially return, Western representatives are hoping riders and visitors to the Butte will make their voices heard. If enough people share their thoughts, both for open areas and species protection, they may finally get the conclusion they've been waiting for. Well, it doesn't hurt to write some letter to the congressman who serve in Washington, D.C. and contact uh, the Department of Interior. The main thing people can do to hurt the situation and to get roads closed is to abuse the roads when, it, when there are signs that say to stay on the trails and stay on the roads, to go off-road and cut trails where they're not supposed to be and to abuse the opportunity to use these roads. Right now, 220 miles of roads exist along the edges of the Butte, with Swing Arm City still open to cross-country fun. Now that likely will remain unchanged until a final decision is reached. Despite Factory Butte's unresolved status, Wayne County officials are confident that the future is bright, no matter how things turn out. We go from the desert here to the red rocks, to the mountains, to the lakes, to the streams, and You'll never meet a better bunch of people than what you meet in Wayne County. Okay, a promise is a promise. And they're hoping it won't be another 12 years before the fate of Factory Butte is finally resolved. From the Trailhead, I'm Terry Wood. The all-new Yamaha Wolverine X4 offers four times the proven off-road capability, four times the comfort, and four times the confidence to deliver four times the excitement on your next outdoor adventure. Get your new Yamaha at Stedman's Recreation. Ride hard, play hard. And we will see you next week on the county seat. 2,000 fence posts, 900 acres, 48 bales, all before lunch, which we caught last Saturday. We earn our scars. 
We wear our work ethic. We work until the work's done. And when it is, a few hours of shut-eye to rest up for tomorrow, the day will finally get something done. Oh, it's been a fantastic day. We sadly have to wrap it up pretty soon here. Well, it's true, the sun is going down. Now, of course, some of you are thinking, okay, they're saying we had a great day and they're walking from the dirt off the highway. No, the bike's right over here on the road. Don't worry, we didn't leave the highway. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, right now we have to go to our sticker winner. Yeah, this is the big part of the day that you are excited about. We found a Dodge pickup truck, kind of goldish in color. A license number, 066V as in Victor, F as in Foxtrot, N as in November. Congratulations, you are our winner, but you've got to call us at our office, 801-947-8888, and then you can claim your prize, a family pass to go-karts. A lot of fun. Yeah, fast carts. It's way fun. Anyway, now let's take a look at next week's show. Why is the San Rafael Swell such a diverse and popular off-road destination? Next week on AYL, we'll find out as Chad and Rhea ride through this one-of-a-kind landscape. From there, Zach Cipriano discovers the trail less traveled, riding through Wayne County, Utah, in an area where you wouldn't think you'd find anything at all, and yet the adventure turns out to be second to none. On the outdoors next week on AYL. All right, Russell, so where's the fog? It's ready to go. It's in the car. Oh, oh great. All right, well... Time to hit the road, uh, not literally, <laughs> not with your Please two bikes. All right. <laughs> yeah, we will not be eating the road. We're just going to be driving the road. All right. I don't want you to have too. I, yeah, I, I don't want you to have too much fun, Ria. Oh, please, I want to. Because then I'll have the payments. So. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, look, maybe, maybe when they go on sale. Okay. <laughs> In 20 years. I, and I see these guys. Oh, we got to wait. They're always on sale. I see. <laughs> Anyway, thanks again to the Stebbins. They are so much fun to hang with. In fact, you should just go out to their store and just be there all day because they're that much fun. Exactly. So uh, between now and then, remember, there is adventure around every curve. You've got to get out there and create your own adventure. At, At your, your leisure. leisure. We'll see you later. 801-943-88. No, oh my God. Eight. You, oh, it's, honey, it's only, it's only been 30 years. It's OK. 801-943-88. Honey, it's 947. <laughs> Jeez, I think he's got heat stroke. You have a message. You have a brand. You have something worth experiencing. What you don't have is an audience. It's time to change that. It's time to partner up with the number one outdoor program in the country and show the world what you have to offer. Advertising on At Your Leisure is effective and affordable, giving you an audience that dwarfs anything else out there. Backed by a proven force of outdoor adventure. Contact the AYL team at 801-947-8888. It's time your message was heard.